Hey guys, Managator back from the Hidden Levels, this time with a Battlefield 1 review. It's worth noting that I actually paid for the product at hand, therefore this review is unbiased as such. Now for the people who know me, they know that I absolutely love all types of shooter games, and my first real love was Battlefield 1942. No, not the, the Xbox 369 43 game. To me, that was kind of quite bland and shallow in contrast. And of course, Medal of Honor Rising Sun, which really inspired and piqued my interest in World War II. After that, I used to spend a lot of my time researching about World War II, and everything about it whilst continuing to engross myself in the world of video games. Now, who said video games don't ever teach you anything? Ever since then, I've been an avid enthusiast of the genre and spent way too many hours, especially on Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, playing the game instead of doing homework and failing classes miserably. That was unfortunately the height of shooter games for me because after that, I suddenly started to get burned out in shooter games and stopped playing them, and of course, struggled to have any interest in them. So, for a while, I've been burned out and not interested in shooters at all, spending most of my free time playing racing games and other genres, really establishing my interest with gaming as a whole. With the exception, of course, Doom. Doom was the first shooter this year to give me hope that I'd get back into the genre. The problem to me and for me was that all FPS games that came out lately have been futuristic and not really something which grabbed my attention, mostly because they end up being purely fictional and the stories generally tend to be overused cliches, for example, Russia's evil and tries to destroy USA, and of course USA wins, rubbing the patriotic flag of justice and how superior she is in everyone's face. <laughs> It was also quite interesting seeing how the industry was constantly doing World War II games and themes before suddenly decided it was outdated, saturated or overused. In fact, I remember when World at War was announced and the majority of people I knew online complained because it was going back to World War II, which is quite amusing. My thoughts now is that the whole shooter industry will leech onto World War I like never before and start to drip feed the most it can after milking World War II and futuristic shooters dry before the next big thing comes up like America's Civil War or something. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Battlefield. Yes, back on topic. Battlefield 1 was a very fun and exciting release for me because, as I brought up before, I haven't had any interest in the series after Bad Company 1. I played lots of Battlefield 1942 and loved the idea of having massive battlefields where a lot of people on the map fought over control over certain points in the map, combined with the realistic feel and amount of vehicles and the size of the map. The game was really something of my dream. The thing with Battlefield 1942 was that it did everything and had a lot of content on the original base vanilla game with a crazy amount of missions which were all in depth and kept me engrossed for hours. So with Battlefield 1, I was hoping they'd go back towards the 1942 route, and to an extent, they did. Now for those people who may be new to the Battlefield series, Battlefield is a first person shooter set across a multitude of combat zones. You get to play as the British, German, Austro-Hungarian, Italians, and the majority of other people involved in the war. You know, the World War. <laughs> There's a handful of game modes from Team Deathmatch, War Pigeons, all the way to Conquest with the latter being the original mode. Where there are control points all over the map, she must fight to take over each point to reduce the enemy's tokens. The series dates back to 2002, but has been hugely successful since then, selling up to at least 65 million copies worldwide. Now let's talk about the positives of the game. Now obviously, the first great thing about AAA games is the graphic scenery and of course the whole atmosphere. And this really, you know, applies to Battlefield 1. Battlefield 1 does an amazing job with this and really engrossed me into the story and, well, battlefields as they say. And the game really hits home, not in a way of I was there, but more in the case of I really feel the World War 1 is something which needed a spotlight on to see the atrocities of war was really like, how much of the struggle it was, how many people died, especially young people, how the male state of the soldiers were, and how atrocious it truly was. Oh, yes, give us a break, give us a break. Yeah. Yeah. What, Henry? What's what? So she needs new spark plugs. Check. Check how far that village is. 
Can you see it, Simon? Can you see the village? Yes. Yes, I see it. And what about our tanks? Can you see any of our tanks down there? Edwards? Yeah. But they're not ours anymore. Sounds like one of our best needs is down in that village. All right. Let's go, Edwards. Let's go. Good luck. Tank is going nowhere and he'll be dead by morning. We're fucked. What is it? You? You're just gonna abandon the mission, are you? Don't you get it? Finch, Pritchard, all of us. We've been fucked all along. Look, if that's what you want, McManus, then just go. Don't you ever talk to me like that. I've run more fucking missions than you have had hot dinner, son. McManus, just fucking go. Another positive for me was the game actually features no microtransactions, which shocked me. I was expecting them to be on the battle packs, which you need to scrap currency for. I rolled my eyes and imagined the prices of them. However, to my shock, you got scrap for scrapping weapon skins, which you can get multiple of by doing random missions and having a chance after the mission to get them. But that's not to say they won't add them in later. The other amazing thing is dynamic weather. As you're fighting, in the battlefield, you could all be going at, like, at each other's throats, and out of nowhere, fog or something can come out or ring. The fog kind of really limits your view distance, and you have to get up close and personal with the fighting. There's no, you know, kind of snipers or bombers really sticking it to you. Of course, when that fog clears away, then you know it resumes its business, resumes its normal. The other one is rain. When you kind of rain doesn't affect the match too much apart from when you're aiming you kind of you know rain's going down on your lens and stuff and yeah I really like the the dynamic weather and just you know kind of the whole game I, I really do like Battlefield when I, I think it's a really great game but now of course it's time for the negatives there's a lack of content a severe lack of content probably set up in a way to get you to buy season pass slash DLCs Compared to Battlefield 1942, which was abundant in campaign mission and maps, Battlefield 1 just doesn't deliver on that. You know, you only get so many missions, so many operations, so many maps. There's also a long loading time, which you're about to witness right now. There are also small bugs here and there, but nothing which really affects the gameplay too much. The Xbox menu is pretty rough when opening it during play and making clips is almost very dangerous, as the game hangs for a while, threatening to crash. Talking of crashing though, the game randomly does crash at times. Also, the weapon selection on classes are, are quite questionable. For instance, it would have been nice to have certain weapons on certain classes, like having the, the rifles on the assault class, but instead we're kind of stuck with SMGs and shotguns. But, you know, that's kind of, that's really strongly opinion. I felt better if you could have any kind of weapon on the classes. Also, the vehicle selection, there's, there's not too many vehicles around. Which is understandable, but I, I do miss the old system of where the vehicles were already in the map and you had to kind of run up to them and jump into the, the vehicles. I felt that was much more fair. 
And of course, the game really lacks in actual soldier customization. Now you get cool dog tags and all that stuff, but it would be nice to have actual customization, where if you play as, for instance, you play as Ottoman, you get to customize your Ottoman character. All that kind of stuff. So yeah. I've really enjoyed playing Battlefield over the last few days, but the biggest problem for me is content, and lack of it. We could have had so much more, like the assassination of Franz Ferdinand, not, not the rock band, <laughs> the French army in their bright army, uh, in their bright gear, getting destroyed by Germans, because literally I thought it was a great idea at the start of the World War One to kind of, you know, fight like a century before. Trench warfare, with no man's land in the middle, we didn't get that. Russia attacking G Germany's Eastern Front, Ottoman Empire attacking Russia. There was just so much stuff that could have been added to the base game and built upon, but they decided not to, and it hurts badly because I won the game more, because I really do love the operations mode, but there's only four operations, and the majority of the time playing multiplayer, they've got stale and reparative. I was hoping for campaign as well that it would also be in death, but it ended up just being kind of five ultra mini campaigns, not allowing me time to sink my teeth in and, you know, really appreciate the war, as they say, to truly enjoy it. In fact, Russia is not even on there, and, you know, yeah. So as much as I'm loving and want more Battlefield 1, right now, I'd recommend waiting for more content and DLC to drop before even playing or getting the game. That is unless, of course, you can't wait and you're on the edge of the sea and you really want to play. Then, by all means, go and get it. Thanks for watching and as always, feel free to like and dislike this video depending on how you enjoyed it. Feel free to subscribe and leave a comment. It's much appreciated. I hope you have a great day. Ta-ta! We have defeated these Italians with a hurricane of fire. You set an example for the central powers across the world. Be proud. One can only speculate what an Austro-Hungarian victory would have meant for the future of Europe. It is possible success could have united the crumbling empire, allowing the Habsburgs to keep control of their countries, races and ethnicities for at least a few months longer.